So welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. We had our first little mishap with the uh, makeshift watering system. Someone ran over my suction hose. Partially my fault. It was probably sitting out here somewhere. I should have had it tucked over that way. But the hose was a little bit longer than what I needed anyway. So I just cut about uh, four or five feet off of it. I don't know if there's a way to uh, straighten that out. If there is, I couldn't figure it out. I have been hitting this pretty hard with the water, but uh, it has been so hot and dry. Like I'll put a couple hundred gallons on it in the evening, maybe another 150 first thing in the morning. And by 10.30, 11 o'clock, it is bone dry again. Now, next week, the first of next week, it's going to cool down a little bit. Uh, the first sign of rain is uh, forecasted for the middle of the month, so I'm going to have to keep watering. But once the temperatures drop a little bit, uh, it'll be better. We'll get this growing. So it's first thing in the morning. Melissa's over there on the other side of that pile of stone rolling around on the concrete. But I have already delivered one load of firewood. And now I'm going to get some compost. Uh, Levi asked me to pick some up for him. And then when I get back, we need to cut and split some more firewood and make another delivery. I delivered one quart of firewood this morning, then got a load of compost from Adler and Sons, took it down to Levi and Kate's, and I got another cord loaded on the dump trailer and split a little bit of firewood. Now I can't deliver this next load for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Uh, Chris won't be back until then, so I have a little bit of time to kill. Part of me wants to go sit in the air conditioning, but I think if I do that, I won't want to leave. It's a scorcher today, so I think we're gonna stay down here at the wood yard and uh, I had a pretty good idea. Let me show you something. So I've been working out of this uh, load of firewood poles here, but out of this load, I've actually gotten some pretty decent saw logs. And that's one of the nice things about having a sawmill along with cutting and splitting firewood. If you look, there's some interesting stuff right here. I don't think we're gonna do this one today, but this cherry right here, 
I'll cut this out of here. It's got a nice burrow on there. I'd like to see what that looks like on the inside. And then like this cherry right here. It's probably only 12 or 13 inches in diameter. But down at this end right here, you know, 13, 14 inches. Pretty straight for six or seven feet. Maybe even eight feet. Then it gets kind of squirrely after that. But I think what we're going to do, we're going to pull this log out of here while we have an hour to kill. And uh, we're going to see what we can get out of this right here. And then, you know, like right there, nice maple, 15, 16 inches in diameter. It's kind of like added value. You know what you can get for this, selling it as bulk firewood or bundle firewood. But if you take a little bit of time when you can, you can kind of pull a few things out of here that'll bring more money. So let's, uh, let's lift this one out of here. We'll cut this off right up there where that Y is. Put this on the mill. This won't take long at all. And we'll see what it looks like on the inside. Yeah, about 13 inches in diameter. We're not going to get a lot out of this, but it should look pretty nice.
so Melissa just came down to see how things are going, and I just finished up. But out of that one log, I got four eight-quarter pieces of cherry. We're going to flip these over and uh, blow them off and put some water on them. But it's really nice stuff. It's clear wood. My only concern with this, you can see how it's separated a little bit. This yeah. was uh, stressed oh. just a little bit. But that's why I sawed it at eight quarter. I figured it wouldn't move as much if I, you know, sawed it at four quarter. But that just shows you that is one yeah. eight foot section of wood out of like a 30 foot pole right. that you can set these off to the side and there's some real value there. I might actually, I'm going to deliver some wood to uh, Chris Martin here in a little bit. Okay. But here sometime in the near future, I'm going to get a lift of really nice like uh cherry okay. eight quarter four quarter i'll bundle it all up and take it to him and we'll have it kiln dried oh, you know nice. you want to slide one of those off without uh, what you don't smash your fingers slide one off onto the and then you can flip it over oh that is nice stuff grab that blower there once We'll pour some water on there. Pennsylvania cherry. That's nice stuff, isn't it? It is. So these are uh, about eight and a half inches wide. Like I said, eight quarter, which is two inches thick. Melissa brought me some water down and some other stuff in a uh, big plastic bag. Yeah, made you a sandwich. I made Hunter a sandwich and I made you one and you didn't come up to the house and he didn't need to eat too. So now I'm delivering. I'm in the delivery service. I told them a little bit ago I had about an hour to kill and uh, I didn't want to go sit in the house because in the air conditioning I wouldn't want to leave again. That's true. It's a hot one. This is the last hot day though, I think. Tomorrow's supposed to be like 80 and then in the 70s next week. Yeah, that sounds good. I like, I like, we're going to enjoy it. You know, it's not going to last long, so. Too hot, Melissa. <laughs> it's all right. You're not melting, are you? We've had to battle the air conditioner every night. Yeah, but uh, friends of ours we were talking with the other night, they keep their house at like 64. <laughs> and I was like, what? Yeah. Wow, 64? That would, def that would, disobey all air conditioning rules i probably would lose my mind you probably would it's not allowed to go below 70 and guess what it's at 68 most of the time you go to bed a little bit before me so i just <laughs> ah so what do you keep your house at what do you what's the temperature what but you know what we were talking i was talking to someone the other day when we were kids <laughs> nobody had air conditioning no. Nobody did. And well, maybe some really, really wealthy people. Yeah, maybe. But they were also the people that had Dixie cups to drink out of. Isn't yeah. that fun? I remember going to a friend's house, and they had Dixie cups that they would just put in the sink and get their water and take a drink and throw it out. And I was like, oh, Are you oh kidding me? Gosh, you must be so wealthy. <laughs> but think of that. No one had air conditioning that we, right, knew, that right. we knew of, and we all survived, but... Uh, you definitely get spoiled. You do. When you're out in a day like this, it's nice yeah. to get a shower and uh, just sit in the AC. Yeah. And we don't use Dixie cups. We just get a new glass out of the cabinet each time and put it in the sink. Cause I do that sometimes three, four times a Magically, evening. someone comes along and does the dishes. Every I don't night. know how it happens. You just get a drink, set the cup down, and you can do that three or four times throughout an evening. No, I couldn't. I would never. But And the next morning, it's all gone. It is. It's I, I don't it's know magical. how it happens. We have a magic kitchen. Whatever. <laughs> I'll use the same cup over and over all day long. <laughs> rinse it out, put my milk, rinse it out, put my juice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do that sometimes. <sighs> Those are the days. But anyway, time to change the subject. And we're going to go <laughs> deliver some firewood. In the AC? In my air-conditioned truck. Yeah, cars back then were just... Wind and the, the vent window, window. Down, like and, the high boys got oh, the vent window. Yeah. That was your AC. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Those are the days. Wine windows. 
All right, I'm gonna go deliver some wood. Kind of like lean into it, you know. Or you'd race. I can get wine. Remember, some would go super easy and some were super hard. Oh, yeah. Remember the radios were the punch button? Oh, yeah. And I didn't know this, and maybe not all radios, but if you if you staggered your finger between two buttons, you got one more station. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that until, like, someone showed me. And yeah. I'm like, I was only living with these four buttons, and here I had <laughs> three more choices. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Just a stroll down memory lane. So this is uh, Chris from Martin Woodworking. You've been on our channel a couple times in the past. Yep. But I was telling them earlier in the video, uh, that big C-17 that flew over, you're part of the 9-11th airlift, correct? Correct, yes. I was a, a, a loadmaster on the C-17, so I took care of all of the cargo and personnel on the back of the airplane. And then I've since separated from the military back in August. Um, so, uh, but that was my job when I was was still in and you know some of those you knew the guys that flew that did that flyover yeah yeah i've flown with them before i knew the guy the the load master that was in the back uh even chatting with him and uh he said it was it was a good flight they had a, a good time that day yeah they were up for a long time yeah <laughs> yeah they were they were circling around i guess they were waiting uh to time it just right for the zelenopal uh parade i don't know if it was a parade or if it was a uh, ceremony it's a ceremony yeah so they were trying to time it so they were like you know uh just in a, like a racetrack over cranberry trying to yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh what have you been up to here we've been up to uh, a lot of drying a lot of flattening and um trying to get uh more firewood going so that's kind of why we have you over here today and um looking to make some more bundles you want to show them uh, your flattener again sure all right so you got some red oak here Yep, yep, got this for a customer. He's supposed to be picking it up tomorrow. We got this dried and flattened. And then, so I, we like to, after flattening it, uh, it's good to sticker it, um, even though it's already dry. But because we've opened up the pores, we wanted to make sure that um, it's you know, you're gonna get even airflow. Right. Because if it's just on one side and it's, it's opened up, you're gonna get a lot of like, warp and twist. And, right. And stuff to it. So we're trying to do our best to keep it um, Unfortunately, kind of at the mercy of our customers when they can come by and pick it up. So yeah, it's a little delayed. Did you figure out what to do with all your sawdust yet? Oh man, I don't know. This is all cherry. Every single bag here, twelve bags, all cherry. And this is all from the flattener, pretty much. Yep. Hmm. Well, let's take a look at this flattener in here. This is some machine. Oh yeah. Now you're going to put an extension on this. Yeah, that's the plan. Uh, is, uh, so we're going to get a five foot extension, and you know, so it'll take it from a nine foot uh, cutting length to up to 14 foot. Uh, obviously, we got a, some infrastructure in the way, so we're going to move this over into the corner, and we'll figure out where we're going to put everything else in, in here for, for the time being. It's kind of you know, in the process of cleaning up and whatnot. Right. So anything that we can dry, we can dry four foot wide by 12 foot eight, eight inches long, we'll be able to then flatten. Okay. Yeah. So that's oh, that's nice then. One yeah. One stop shop. That's that's our goal. So. Yeah, four by twelve. That's uh. It's a big. That pretty much covers. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's one guy that drives with us that he actually cuts stuff. It's too big. We can't even dry it. His stuff starts at sixty inches and goes up. <laughs> Just wider. A lot of maple or what, what's he, where's he getting that big wood at? Um, oak, maples, um, basically. And uh, his shop is over in Gibsonia, and like on the other side of the street is a professional tree service. So he just takes everything that they don't want to deal with. Yeah, and those <laughs> guys just want to get rid of that That's it. stuff. It, it's it's a great it's a great relationship to have if you're into sawmill, sawmill yeah. work, and cutting big slabs. So he must have a big mill for that. Yeah, he got a true cut. That it, I think it's what are those are six or seven foot wide? I think. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're big boys too, and I mean. Then he's cutting like three inch thick oak, you know, six uh, five, hundreds six, of thousand pounds. Oh, easily. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. yeah. 
All right, Chris. Well, it was nice seeing you. You can check out Chris's channel, Martin Woodworking. What yep. else you got going on? You on Facebook, Instagram, or anything? Yeah, uh, Facebook, Instagram, MartinWoodworking.com. You can you can find us there. And then we have you know it's easier to find our socials on that. Are you but, still? How far booked out do you usually stay on the kiln? So we usually stay anywhere from three to six months, um, and that was during COVID. Everybody was looking for just any way to make money right now. So it's it's calmed down a little bit. We're still at least two, two okay. months. And then I've got other people approaching me to want to get a, the full kiln by themselves. So instead of having mixed with you know, several different customers, a couple people want to get in there and just load it up with all their own stock. How many feet can you fit in there? Um, it's advertised at 2,000 board feet. That's dimensional. And that's if you're in a perfect world where there's no like air gaps. Um, 1,500 comfortably? Yeah, and then uh, 1,250 probably for slabs, just yeah. because, you know. Right. Yeah, there are just lots of lots of dead space in there, so. Right. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I got to go to uh, one of about 20 graduation parties. <laughs> it's a good problem to have, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice seeing you, Chris. Uh, you too.